All right, everybody, welcome back to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. Now, I'm really excited to bring you something from somebody who is extremely talented. I can't even tell you how good this person is at their job. And I just had to say to them, look, please, please come and tell us how you do your job. Because if you nail this kind of function in any company, the, the success and support function, sometimes it's they're separate, but we're talking about both here. You are on to a winner. Seriously, you're on to winner. And at Autoclose, we're really proud to do what we call white glove service. And that's why a lot of our clients stay so long and, and they upgrade and all those kinds of things, which is so helpful for a business. It's always a bit of an uphill struggle if you're replacing companies that you've already signed over and over and over again. That's not really growth. That's working too hard. So Yelena, who leads our CSM and, and support team here at Autoclose, she just drops a masterclass. This is top tier stuff from her. She is insanely good at what she does and i just had to ask her can you tell me about how you do everything and she said yeah sure let's do an interview so here it is i hope you enjoy it and i'll see you at the end of the episode this session is going to be a bit different okay we've had a lot of sales we've had a lot of marketing had a lot of strategy kind of stuff this one's a little bit different so we've got success and support coming to the fray and i feel like it's not a fair representation of how to grow a company if you don't have someone who's talking about upselling and keeping your customers happy keeping them in general so I, I feel like it flies a little bit under the radar we kind of forget about that it's we're all so obsessed with getting the deals getting customers how much money we've got and how many deals we're going to hit and then we forget afterwards we just completely forget so not a good thing to do so i'm here with yelena from the auto close team she is a phenomenal phenomenal oh. success and support manager Ollie, she's, you'll, she's, you'll she's gonna blush. deny it but she is <laughs> she's gonna deny it but she is so welcome to growth month yelena how's it going Thanks, Oli. Well, uh, thank you for this kind introduction. Uh, you are making me blush. I hope it's not, you know, people cannot see that on camera. Uh, it's been going great. Uh, this has been a big week for Oracle's team. So uh, thank you for hosting me. Cool. All right. So um, let's do a quick introduction to you, just a bit of your background, and then we'll go into some questions that we can debate some stuff. So how long have you been doing this kind of work? Well, I've been with Sean for the past five years already. I cannot believe it, but it's been officially five years. Um, I started working with his other company, Exchange Leads, even before Autocos was founded. And then uh, as soon as Autocos went uh, live on Absumo, that was our first big campaign, I joined uh, the support team. Then I led the support team for a couple of years. And uh, I think it's been almost two years now since uh, I moved to, to customer success. Okay. So about five years, generally speaking. Yes. Does it feel like five or does it feel more? <laughs> well, everyone who knows Sean knows that this feels <laughs> it's been much more than five years. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's been a crazy five years, great five years. So... I'm overall very, very happy with it. I'm going to take it as 25 years, it feels like, but but okay. So uh, so tell me a bit about what your general week or what does a general month for you look like? What, and I feel maybe even before we do that, we should distinguish what is success and what is um, support. I feel like they get mixed up quite a bit. So so in your view, what's, what's the difference? So I would say that support and uh, success in general are very similar. Um, job positions. Uh, both of those are the first line of defense for every company. And uh, I definitely strongly believe that every company should invest some time and resources in um, creating a good support slash uh, success or uh, customer experience team. Uh, the roles are very similar. Uh, the difference is that customer support is a bit more oriented towards the technical side of uh, the platform while customer success team is uh, oriented towards the success of the clients using the platform. Okay. So it could be technical questions, could be issues they've got. Everything. Everything. Right. Our uh, you know, usual week or month or day uh, is uh, full of client calls. Um, sometimes those are strategy-oriented calls, uh, you know, creating a playbook for uh, customers how to best succeed using uh, the tool. And sometimes those are uh, the training slash troubleshooting calls uh, in case uh, anything uh, comes up, any problem, an issue. Uh, customer success is uh, always there to uh, answer those questions, help if it's possible. And uh, that is how it's very similar to working in support. 
Okay, so oh, do you think it's very common to have both, as they are very similar, or would it be one team where you have different roles? Uh, usually, I mean, it can be both. It can be uh, either you know a person who will uh, often jump on a call with a client, even though uh, it's working uh, as a support agent, uh, and uh, sometimes it can be separate teams. Uh, when we started with all those, uh, we didn't have a successful uh, at the beginning. So uh, mostly those were uh, sport agents. Uh, there were uh, three of us uh, in sport. My amazing colleagues, Miloš and Emanja, uh, who are now working in sport. And we often uh, jump on a call with a client. So, you know, the roles are very, very similar. Okay. So uh, just because you mentioned a couple of their names, I'd like to know, what do you think is a key skill or characteristic? Let's say I want to hire another support or success team person what outside of the experience of doing that type of role what kind of things would you look for if i was say fresh out of school or something like that would i have to be quite um what i'm not even going to guess i'm going to let you i'm going to let you answer what do you think <laughs> well uh you know i think that people often make a mistake where they are they are looking uh for someone with a technical background uh, to fill the position of customer support. And I agree, technical background is important in uh, every SaaS company. But uh, when we are looking to hire, I think we are aiming for someone with uh, uh, you know more uh, soft skills than uh, technical skills. Uh, I strongly believe that technical skills can be can be taught and uh, you know, soft skills are a bit harder to to teach someone. So I think uh, the primary thing is to be a good listener. Uh, people would often uh, get on a call with us to just, you know, catch up and um, chat a bit. So uh, definitely, if we would hire someone right now, and actually we recently did, uh, that would definitely be a soft skill and, uh, you know, uh, be an active listener. Active listening. Okay. So like listen out for not just on the surface level, what the problem or the goal might be, it's sort of how and why behind it. Yes. I was kind of guessing you were going to say the word patience. I don't know why. Is that my <laughs> judgment coming off or, or did, did I speak for you? No, no, no. I definitely believe that uh, you need to be patient, uh, especially, you know, when uh, there are uh, any potential issues with a platform, you know, people, uh, tend to uh, lose their, their calm. So definitely, I would say that you need to be patient uh, with clients. And that is also one of the soft skills I was mentioning before. Okay, so uh, switching gears a little bit. So I know one of the big things in your job and in the team that you run, one of the like most important things is the onboarding. If it's not done that well, or if it doesn't happen in whatever way, pretty much the odds are the client isn't going to be successful and that means they're not going to stay, give or take. Exactly. So talk to me a bit about how you do onboarding. What, what's the way that you do it and why is it so important? Uh, I believe that uh, onboarding process is uh, probably the most important uh, part of the customer journey. So from, from the moment they uh, come to your platform, if uh, they are not onboarded properly, uh, they probably don't know how to use the system. Uh, that means that uh, they are higher risk uh, to churn. And uh, I believe that you know one of the things that um, people most talk about on the internet is uh, that you know it takes more more resources, more money, more everything to acquire a new customer than to retain uh, the existing one. And uh, our onboarding process uh, is quite different for each uh, client. So we are always trying to have a customized tailor, a tailored uh, onboarding flow for uh, each different customer. Uh, of course, we do have a certain playbook, uh, but uh, usually it will depend on uh, the user itself. Uh, if they ever use the smaller platform, uh, if they uh, know their self around, you know, if they ever use all the posts before. Uh, so the process will differ a bit, uh, but still, we are trying to provide as many onboarding um, calls to a client uh, according to their needs. And then, of course, uh, what we're trying to do is to cover the most important parts of all the calls, uh, most important segments uh, on the first call. 
And then uh, moving forward from that, uh, we talk strategy. Uh, we talk what after uh, you run your first successful auto post campaign and so on. Right. So I'm imagining most people, they're probably in the middle. They know roughly what's going to happen if they start to use the tool. They'll probably be able to find out some or most of it by themselves, if not all of it. And occasionally they might ask for some help or they might use maybe the knowledge base, something like that. But most people will probably will fit in between that area. And that's kind of good for you. You can just bend around what they need to know and that sort of stuff. What do you do on the extreme? So I'm thinking of the people who have you know, used this stuff before and they don't need any help at all. They basically don't need you, but obviously you want to make sure that you're there for them. You're helping them to be successful you know, without just ignoring them because that means they don't, they don't have any contact with us. And then on the flip side, when people need a lot of help, because you've, you've kind of got to balance your own day. And I've seen your calendar. <laughs> oh, man, that's a busy calendar. Like you can't just spend two days with one client because they're, you know, crap in the bed. They, you can't do it. So how do you balance it? Well, that's actually a good question. So uh, one of the things that um, we are very proud of are the tutorials we have. Um, we have different initiatives uh, every month, uh, whether it's a, a different uh, onboarding sequence, onboarding campaign, of course, we are using all the codes for that. Uh, but uh, we are trying to get every customer set up in the system, even if they think they don't need help from the customer success. Uh, we often see where after a month or two months, uh, they uh, still want to chat with you. And at that point, it's very important to, for them to know who's their point of contact. So uh, if they don't know that they are lost, they don't know who to reach out to. And, uh, you know, I think uh, that is a thin line where uh, you are going from a great customer experience to very poor customer experience. So we are trying to stay in touch with the customer uh, as much as we can. Uh, even, again, if they think uh, they don't need our help, uh, a monthly uh, review call or um, check-in uh, email uh, will go a long way in those, uh, in those cases. Uh, for other customers, uh, the ones who need uh, more hand-holding, uh, in that case, we are still trying to uh, give them as uh, much of the time as they need. Uh, but if that's not feasible, if, uh, you know, we have a, a, a lot of work to do, if uh, there's a lot of workload um, for our team, uh, we have an onboarding resources, uh, in-app onboarding resources, uh, knowledge base, uh, different type of videos. And of course, they can always uh, reach out to support for, uh, you know, uh, we help if uh, there's a need for that. So for, for the average person, not those who are needing like, you know, constant help, how much would you say is too much communication from from the success team to them in the first couple of weeks, couple of months? Because I feel like um, when I've like experimented with these things or, or try to automate these processes, you can you can really underdo it so that it doesn't work. But if you do too much, it's it's really off putting and, and it's quite annoying if you're trying to use a new tool and you've not even had a minute to look at it and you're getting like nine emails in a row it's a lot so how do you like what's your um what's your cadence of how many times you email per week or month for particularly at the start uh something that uh, i'm trying to do uh after the handoff process uh they always get uh, a very customized email um uh, from customer success in this case uh from me uh and then uh it depends on uh, whether they book the onboarding call uh, after that email or not. If they don't book the onboarding call, I'm trying to reach out to them uh, at least once a week for the first month. Uh, and then uh, moving forward in case, uh, you know, client doesn't want to engage with me, uh, then we are definitely doing a monthly check-ins uh, with the client to make sure that, uh, you know, they're good on that front. Okay, so the people that... Do you book the onboarding once a month? How's it going? Can I help you with anything? They might say no, all okay, thank you very much. The people that do not book the call, so let's say you might email them once a week for a month, could be four emails. Are you saying, is it basically like a sales email where you're saying, like, can we meet? And then you're following up, just saying it a bit differently? Or, or are you sending them stuff or like no. content? Or what's I it like to send them uh, resources, how to be successful with a tool. So even if they don't uh, wish to book a call with me, uh, they can always learn something new and they can always learn more. And, uh, you know, at that point, uh, after that initial uh, training sequence uh, with 
if you want to do this, then click here. Uh, we are trying to give them some tips and tricks how to exceed in uh, the cold campaigns. Okay. So I'm imagining not for every single customer because we've got a fair few thousand that we, you just couldn't do it. You couldn't look at their particular usage of auto close and see if they are doing lots, right? But if you have a bigger customer and you've just onboarded them, would you be doing something like that or, or would that be a bandwidth problem? Well, uh, even though we have a lot of customers and only a handful of people in the customer success, uh, we are trying to do the review of uh, each account uh, pretty much regularly. Maybe not every week, but every month, uh, most definitely. Uh, and at that point, uh, you can clearly see uh, what has been the activity of uh, those clients uh, within the month. Uh, if we notice anything unusual, uh, if uh, you know they are they are not doing uh, something or they are doing something uh, in a wrong way, uh, in that case, uh, you know it's uh, the best option is to follow up with them immediately, uh, point out what they could do better, and uh, take it from there. If we notice that people are doing a good job, uh, it's uh, that much easier. It's just, uh, you know, uh, uh, an email to acknowledge how good a job they did uh, in the past month or a few months, depending on uh, the touch base in campaign. Okay, cool. So um, so speaking of people doing well then, uh, another part, and this is, I don't know if I'm speaking for you unfairly here, I would say your specialty is upselling. I've never seen anybody as good <laughs> at it as you. Well, always Talk to me about how you do that. Uh, well, mostly it's uh, building the relationship uh, with the client. And I strongly believe uh, in uh, building relationship. That is why customer success role is the best. Uh, it's the perfect mix of uh, customer support and uh, sales. So I enjoy that uh, very much. Uh, it, you know, a um, few times uh, Sean wanted me to transfer to his team, uh, to sales team, but, you know, I... I really love being a customer success manager. Uh, so I think that my uh, the, the, the biggest uh, advantage um, as a customer success is that you get to build that relationship with your client and uh, upsells come easy after that. So one thing that we've tried a few times, and I'm just interested in how you actually approach that general conversation or whether they come to you and they already know what they want to do. So let's say I'm a client and I've just I've started about two months ago. Everything is going really good. What, what's the process between now and me signing a deal to upsell? Is it you reaching out and saying, hey, it looks like it's going well. Um, you know, If you need any more seats, let me know. Or is it me coming to you saying I, I want to add some more users what do i do or how would it work uh usually for me uh upsells uh come very organically uh i don't think i ever built a pipeline of uh, potential upsells uh ever since i started as a customer success uh people would come to me because they've been so successful with all the posts uh with their accounts it's only natural that they want more. They want to sign up their team members. Um, if uh, uh, they are uh, managers, uh, they want their team to start using that and be a, as successful as uh, they are. So pretty much upsells for me come uh, organically. Uh, and I think that, you know, uh, you are making a... a uh, if, you're, if you're trying too hard to upsell someone, I think they would notice that. So for me, it's always give them the best possible service, uh, go above and beyond uh, in whatever you're doing, and upsells will come after that. And right. for right. our team, that has proven to be true. So I guess we're doing something right. Okay. But what about, um, so I'm trying to remember when it was. It might have been for Valentine's Day. It might have been for Black Friday, probably Christmas too. We, we've done a few little sales and those types of things. So how how do you make sure that you balance? Because if you want to offer your customers some stuff, it's you know, particularly if you sell software, you're not really losing too much if you were to discount or make a special offer for a client, right? So how do you make sure that you're offering them stuff that that is obviously you know? Uh, well, I'm, I'm trying to ask a question. I'm doing a terrible job of it. <laughs> you, you're saying that you never um, you never really like to go and ask them. They normally come to you. 
but it's never a bad idea to offer a deal, is it? But they don't know about that until you tell them. So, so Absolutely. when that happens, what what do you do then? Uh, well, every year we would have two or three uh, different uh, upselling campaigns. Uh, usually around uh, big holidays, uh, we actually did uh, something for around Christmas. Actually, for uh, existing customers, uh, we uh, uh, released the first uh, advent calendar campaign. Uh, so our marketing team did an amazing job with that. Um, it was very, uh, you know, it, it was new. I don't think that uh, too many softwares uh, did something similar uh, and people loved it. So every day uh, throughout the Advent month, uh, customers got a different deal. And it was up to them whether they want to uh, upgrade or not. Uh, and uh, we actually had quite few upsells out of that campaign. Uh, we are even thinking of making it annual. Uh, and uh, our, every, every time we release a new feature, this is my little helper. She helps on every call. <laughs> Kat definitely wants an upsell. <laughs> definitely. So every, um, every time we release a big feature, every time uh, there is a big holiday in um, US or Canada, we would usually do uh, an upsell campaign. And uh, we are trying to offer a deal that's, uh, you know, too good to uh, miss on that. So those are rare cases where we would actually offer uh, an upsell opportunity to a customer. Usually it's the other way around. Okay. So most of the rest of the time they'll come to you. They know who to reach out to. They know, you know, what you can do for them. They'll come to you. But when there's a holiday, when there's a particular deal, a new feature, those are the times when you're going to reach out and probably you're going to be, I would imagine you don't really have to make it that obvious. You can just say to them, here's everything that you need to know about this new feature. By the way, you can upgrade to it if you want, right? It's not really a subtle, would you like to buy it? <laughs> it's it's a lot more subdued than no, that, isn't it? No, it's usually much more personalized uh, campaign. And, uh, you know, it's important for your customers to understand, un understand how they would benefit uh, from that feature. Or, you know, why uh, and uh, how they would benefit from uh, the upsell campaign itself. Because uh, if you have a client who's thinking about uh, purchasing more seats or uh, data or anything else, uh, you know, they know we have those uh, upselling um, campaign and dis bigger discounts around certain holidays. So, you know, they can uh, plan to upgrade uh, during that time. Okay, Yelena, so I'm watching the clock. We've got a few minutes left. This has been really nice and easy and good fun. I'm going to make it a little bit difficult for you oh. at the end. I'm sorry, <laughs> a little bit. Churn is the the horrible thing about um, the success and support function. You've got to deal with people saying, I don't want this anymore, please cancel. Um, there's, there's the other side of it where people are difficult just for the sake of trying to get something for free and, and all those things. So we're going to ignore that bit of it. What should I expect in terms of churn? I, I'm a, let's pretend I'm a new business owner i've got a, i've got my first like couple hundred customers how often how much um how difficult is it to deal with what what kinds of things should i expect well the sad truth is that users will churn no matter how good the platform is uh we are right now in a very competitive market there are a lot of similar uh tools um some more expensive uh, some less expensive, but either way, uh, no matter how good uh, customer service you have, no matter how good your uh, product is, people will churn and that's ine inevitable. But uh, if you go beyond, ab above and beyond and uh, provide a good service to your users, uh, churn rate will go lower. So our usual churn rate is uh, around four to five percent and i think that is uh you know that that is manageable turn rate uh nothing to lose your head about so uh people would try to aim for as lower turn rate as possible even though sometimes it's uh you know not possible to don't have a churn it's uh something that did you say between four and five was that yeah. percent so I, I know, according to Sasta, if you have 90% or better net revenue retention, 
which, which you would say if ours is four or five that we have 95 or 96 um you're above average by a long way and if you get to 100 percent, so like if you lose customers but you upsell more of them for the same amount or even more that's like amazing no one does that so that, that just goes to show you how little churn that is mm, exactly so you know there's always uh with with every customer there's a slight churn risk uh but again, if you go ab uh, above and beyond and providing a good customer service, uh, they will stay just because of the good customer service. Uh, you know, we had uh, at the beginning, we had some instances when uh, we had a big problem uh, with the platform. Uh, I think the last time we had that was in 2018. And uh, I think it happened around the Christmas holiday. So, uh, you know, our team was uh, pretty much off during that time. And then uh, we had a major outage. Um, things were not working the way uh, it's expected. So, you know, it was bad. Uh, and a lot of customers at that time noticed a problem. Uh, even though, you know, they are starting to lose faith in your system, uh, you can still turn things around. Uh, if you give them a needed support and uh, guide them through uh, the process. So I would say that, you know, in those cases, churn is possible. But again, uh, if you try your best to uh, provide uh, deadlines, uh, EPAs for the resolution, um, guide them through um, a different setup, uh, if uh, you need to have a different setup or, uh, you know, uh, guiding through the problem uh, itself, uh, people will be thankful for that and, you know, they will stay. Okay, Yelena, so we're just about out of time. But before you go, two very quick things. Um, number one, what is the one piece of advice you give to someone looking to build out their first ever success and support team? And then when, when you've got that tip out there, um, where can people find and connect and follow you? And then we're done today. Uh, one advice is definitely invest time and resources in building a support and success team. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, your uh, support people um, don't have to be uh, from the technical background. They don't have uh, to have a technical background, but uh, you know, look for people who are willing to go above and beyond in uh, serving your customers. I definitely believe that is uh, that is the most important thing. Uh, also, another piece of advice, um, and then I will stop, I promise. Uh, try to be as responsive uh, as you can. Uh, even if you need to hire more people, believe me, that will go a long way. Love it. Okay, where can people connect with you? Uh, well, most people know where to find me. Uh, most of my clients, they have my personal number, my uh, uh office number, uh, email, uh, they can find me on LinkedIn. So uh, if you need to connect with me, I'm sure you already know where to find me. Awesome. All right, Yana, thanks so much. This was really good fun. Um, enjoyed having you on and great stuff as usual. Like I said, everybody, yeah. Yana's probably the best um, CSM I've ever seen. Uh, the, the upsell channel is just ridiculous at this point. It's just, it never ends. So, uh, so I had to have her on and learn how she does her thing. Okay, everybody. So that's the end of the show. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. Yelena is top class. So I definitely give her a follow on LinkedIn uh, if you want to go and find her. Um, it, I've never really seen a success and support person have uh, so much, uh, so many tactics in their, in their weapon wheel as she does. So uh, awesome to work with her. I'm really good to hear about what she does. And if you enjoyed this week's show, please make sure you do me a favor. Drop a like, maybe drop a subscribe and even leave a comment if you felt like you had a question or something you wanted to say. We're also publishing every week on a Tuesday. So you can find us on Spotify. You can find us on Apple Podcasts and all those kinds of places everywhere you'd probably expect. But we also live stream this actually on my Twitter and my LinkedIn as well. So if you're kind of more active over there, feel free to drop a follow and, and you'll see this every Tuesday as well. But with that, thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.